So find a different way. We gonna set up the song. We say. We don't wanna go war. Only make hapla. We don't wanna go war. The only thing. Good evening, everyone. Wait for the little lag to come. And we should all be live together. I'm just waiting to see. All right, I see the chat. Dirk, as usual, thanks for coming. Douglas, how you doing? Thank you. Thanks for coming back. Shorty, thanks. Good evening, are you? A few people today. Not so bad. I thought I'd be on my own after all that time. Not doing live streams but uh, it's good to be back i struggled a bit with the with the cameras and all because all the wires were all mixed up but we're up and running now so i hope everybody is doing well i just have to see microphone chris how you doing chris 
I suppose everybody can hear me. I can see my mic is working, so give me a thumbs up that you can hear everything. Everything is live, and we get starting. Ice fishing season in Canada, yeah. Bleh, I wouldn't be in for it. <laughs> wouldn't be into ice fishing. Oh man, it's just um, I'm even struggling at the moment to get out to get my arse out of bed to to go out and and fish. We had so much rain. Thanks, Douglas. Thumbs up. That means everybody can hear me. So we're going to be able to start very soon. So quick catch up with everyone. Hope everybody is doing well. Everybody is good here. Apart from a very, very, very wet winter we had here. A little bit cold. Thank you, Joseph. Everything is good. Yeah, uh, a lot of rain here. Um, cold. No wind. We didn't have any any uh storms this winter which is uh, the norm in ireland no storms this winter but uh, a constant cold temperature uh constant cold water temperature as well where we're like around four degrees all winter and every time we're under the five degrees it, it gets really hard to to get pike moving here so you might uh, have a bit of luck on dead bait and ledgering dead baits but uh, that's not my 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 kind of gig at the moment uh, i just don't enjoy sitting and waiting i like to be active so but um definitely the days are getting longer at the moment so i'm I'm really looking forward to get back on the float tube and uh, get some fishing going i might get a few videos before i start walking i'm back walking around st patrick's day here mid march season is back lodge is uh, nearly fully booked so i have a good busy season ahead of me which i'm glad and yeah that's about the news from my side um a few more videos coming i'll try to do a few more live streams like this i will post on instagram a kind of a choice of two flies to tie on the night uh tonight we had the choice of the silicone fly this guy here the silicone super light super interesting fly i i really enjoyed the the first bit of fishing i did with it uh definitely a successful tie got a lot of fish uh many many clients have been really happy with those as well so i'll put it against another fly next live stream and you can vote on instagram for the one you want me to tie for the evening uh tonight's tie uh overwhelmingly it's the hollow uh nayat hair that won it uh i think like three quarters of the votes were for the hollow nayat so I'll do you my own version of the whole Anayat. Um, as usual, you know me. I I enjoy tying flies, uh, overcomplicated sometimes and uh, time consuming. But I also enjoy tying quick flies. Uh, the one that uh, you know I call um, the guide the guide flies. Uh, simple to tie, cost effective, and uh, more importantly, they do catch a lot of fish. So I came up with uh, this little version of a hollow nayat. Uh, no bucktail in it, surprisingly, uh, but I am using uh, deer hair for that one. I like the the, the extra buoyancy that uh, deer hair brings to the mix. So that's we go with this one today. Maybe you see it better here. There you go. Um, I kind of like the deer hair, especially different colors like that. Easy to e easy to use, easy to tie. Um, gives a little bit of volume to the fly. It's kind of like using cones inside the fly, <coughs> and then you get the extra buoyancy with the the belly hair. So it's a slow slow sinking fly. Uh, I don't tend to overdo it too much with the with the with the belly hair on the inside of the fly inside the body but uh, i'll put a little bit more on the head and it kind of gives it like a, a really nice slow sinking fly i do like so slow sinking fly you can just leave them sitting uh, fish them quite often in the rivers so you can just see them drifting they don't really sink very quick so yeah it's nice nice visual fly perfect for the spring spring fishing 
Um, quickly before we start, yeah, I wanted to thank all the new subscribers. I know there's quite a few that came after that Decathlon Flowtube video. Uh, I got a big bump of subscribers, so thank you very much for everyone. As usual, I see Douglas with your little badge beside your name there. Uh, Douglas has been a long supporter of the of the stream, just simply by subscribing to the stream. Stream. Uh, it's not something you have to do, but uh, it's a kind of nice thing to subscribe to the channel. Uh, other way you can support um, here is uh, now I've launched on uh, Spreadshop uh, new uh, t-shirts and um, merchandise so you can get yourself some merch, uh, a little bit of the money come to me, uh, a little bit, <laughs> they keep most of the money but still I still get a little cut. But at least you end up with something in your hand, like a nice hoodie or something like that. So thanks for everybody who bought some merch uh, over the last few months. There'll be more design coming. And uh, yeah, let's get started. So this one, as usual, i not complicated with the hook. I go, as usual, for my standard Sakuma 545 uh, five, uh, Sakuma Manta. So hopefully I see how it works because it's been a while since I tied. So as usual, I like a good base of tread. I don't like the fly to start rolling after a few outing fishing. So I like to put a nice base and glue it sticks to the hook, doesn't spin and turn. Especially when you fish for pike, that can happen quite often. So, uh, cheers, Slunsha, wherever you're from. Thank you, Paj. Paj Nolan obviously got a got a nice shirt because he says they're great quality. Yeah, I'm really happy with them. Um, um, I thought they were going to be, you know, sometimes you don't know when you deal with the third party company, but I'm really, really happy with the shirts, the way they came out. T-shirts. I, I, I bought a few few things um, of spread shirt and I'm quite happy to, to put my design with them. So, all right. So, not yet. So, all you need is a little bit of flash. If you want, you don't have to, to use flash. I use a tiny bit of flash. So, not yet, of course. There is one and only one place, uh, I believe, if you want to get good, decent not yet, and that's big streamers. Uh, the choice in colors and the quality of the not yet they have is just like second to none. So, no question where to get your not yet. Um, so, I'm out of white. I like a white belly uh, when I do bait fish. One that worked well uh, was uh, this gray, this gray Nayat with some white on their belly. It really worked nicely. So what do we have? We have a gray orange, a kind of a root beer, and an olive and root beer. Uh, let's see what will show best in the camera. Yeah, probably a little bit olive. All right, as usual, I try to keep up. If you have any questions in the chat, just fire them away. It doesn't have to be with that fly. It could be about anything. I'll try to answer to everything. So usual, especially uh, belly hair and nayat, you're going to have a lot of fluff to, to clear out in the middle. So uh, do I have my brush? Yeah. I brushed a cat yesterday. By the way, cat, cat fluff makes great dubbing for your trout flies. All right. Yeah, uh, yeah, Dirk, yeah, Nayat is fantastic. Great, great material, easy to work with. Um, and it's not as tangly uh, and as fragile as uh, Icelandic... Uh, was Icelandic sheep or Icelandic goat. Uh, Nayat is a little bit tougher in the jaws of pike. So I'm going to start with a little tag of uh, belly hair. So grab yourself a little bit of belly hair. Oh, I'm not going to tie it too long. I'll get a nice little healthy pinch. Just a little bit less thick than a pencil about like for, for the amount. As usual, make sure you you clean all that under fluff in there. It's gonna be a rug, not a cut. Mm. 
Now we're just going to make a little tag of belly hair on the back. Spin it, spin it around. That's it. That simple. A little hot butt. Thank you, Dirk. I'm going to make you an admin on the on the channel. You'll be <laughs> thanks for good to have an input of everyone like that. So not yet. Okay. So you get the long, nice, fluffy fibers. Go up here, and then you see in the middle you get all that extra fiber. This is what give keeps the the heat of the animal. So we're gonna get rid of all that because we don't want all that fluff from the middle. So I'm gonna get a little bit, little strand. Now mostly when you buy a patch of Nayat, it's all the same length. It's not like when you buy a bucktail, you get the short hair on one side, the longer hair on the other side. Usually you go and it's mostly all the long hair. So grab yourself a little pinch of Nayat. So it looks like a big pinch because we have all that extra inside so just grab yourself at the base like that and just gently by hand start getting rid of all that fluff i like to go by hand first because if you go with the brush in there you might get a little bit too tangled so get the worst of it with hand with by hand and then get the brush in there there you go and you, you end up just with the long fibers and not with too much of that fluff. Now for this, we're just gonna, not too long for the back. I wanna kind of a, no, I don't wanna make a huge bait fish. So simple, if you wanna go one color, you just tie all around. We're gonna go for a two color bait fish. So we're gonna get the darker, back and then uh, the little color for the belly so first for the first one for the tail i'm going to go all olive and again each strand that you take each clump make sure you brush it out clean it up See, it's not a it's not a huge chunk that I put at a time like I don't want to put too much so it's gonna go on the belly a simple case to reverse tie that now not yet reverse tie very easily so make sure you get a nice 360 spread all around the shank Nice and even. Get a little pinch into shape. Now when you tie, it's important to don't go over. Okay, just create a little dam of thread just at the front. There you go. So now you have the beginning of it and you can see already how it flares and I really like that if you don't put too much Nayat hair around uh, you can actually see the the lights are a little bit harsh at the moment but there there you go you see it better now I shadow that a bit you can see the hot spot inside the Nayat gives it a nice little touch extra color in the water I like it I like to to have that little contrast so that's that's another important uh, point not to put too much Nayat because you kind of hide that that nice little hot flash of color inside a uh, little point of glue so like that nothing will move uh -huh. still remember when I used to do the live streams during co the old virus days I had no super glue 
I have super glue now. <laughs> and we keep going. We're going to do another one. But here. And um, after we're going to put the head on. So it's uh, you don't need to put too much. You don't need to tie right at the front. I like to give it a little bit of space because it's all about volume and lightness. That's a light fly. Some people sometimes don't like to leave a little blank space of thread, but it makes absolutely no difference to the to the catching ability of the fly or the aesthetic. I used to be like that when I started fly tying. I thought like that everything had to be. You couldn't leave any blank place or it'll be it'll look bad or it won't work but in fact i was doing the opposite i was putting way too much material on my hook so making expensive flies that were not swimming very nicely and they were hard to cast so again just cleaning that deer belly i started using a lot of deer belly in flies I really like it hidden in, in fibers or things like that. That way it gives a lovely buoyancy without using too much foam or plastic. So we'll move forward and we're going to do the same. One, two, three la loops around three wraps and I'm going to spin that around. And again, make sure it's all around. Tighten that. Give it a little tidy. So yeah, as you can see, it's not an overcomplicated fly. Like anybody can tie that. Super easy fly. So now we'll go back with the olive, olive on top. And then we're going to start with a, a bit of an orange belly. I'm going to use a little bit longer than I yet now. Again, give it a good brush, give it a good clean. So you want that to, to be nice and light like that, the fibers. Keep all the bad stuff on your brush. And then we start with the orange belly. Not really orange, that. that's more of a root beer. Burnt orange. Now sometimes when you have Nayat, it's a wild animal, so you probably, I don't know if it's going to show yet, it's probably show on this camera. You see there's all sorts of things in this hair. So sometimes it could be lice. But I mean, they're dead, so not to worry. Sometimes it could be seeds of grass, or they do come from a from an animal. It's not made in a in a factory. This so again, very important. That's why you want to really, really brush that out, sort all that. Now we're on the belly. Try not to mix the two colors together. Adjust it a little bit. I'll cut the extra. I'm 
going to do the same. Make sure that all the fibers are nicely spread. It's more important there because we don't put too much now yet. So we don't want to leave too much blank space. So take your time to spread it. Like that, the fly is not going to lean to one side. You get the exact same amount of material all around. Get a couple of wraps just at the front. Have another look. And it looks good. Give it another few wraps. And now I'm going to give a little brush to all that. That's going to set all the fibers back straight and you'll have a better idea of if you need more Nayat or if it's enough. As you can see, that light is a little bit hard. Yeah, it's a lot better. As you can see, there's not much Nayat because you can still see the, the deer belly inside. I'll put a few pictures tomorrow on Instagram and of that fly and you can see it maybe in, in a little bit more details quality when your live streaming is not that fantastic so as so usual we'll build our little dam of thread at the front as you can see nayat you get a nice bounce of reverse tying that nayat you get a lot of volume and then you get that buoyancy of the of the belly hair inside. So for flash, I like to put a little bit of flash now, so it doesn't get drowned inside the the nayat. I like to put it last on the top. It'll mix a little bit with the fibers once it gets it gets a couple of hits from a pike. Don't worry. It'll it'll shuffle them and mix them for you. I don't need to put too much, no need to go over the top. Just about 10, 12 strand. Just to reflect a little bit of the light on the top. Sometimes I like to put flash, not just for the pike, but for me as well. Especially when I fish slow flies like that, that I stay just under the surface. Because it gives me a good visual point for me to follow the fly as well, having that flash. It kind of helps me to, to locate the fly a little bit easier. See how it swims. So I'm going to put it just on the on the back side, spread it to the flanks. And lock it. I'll stick a little bit of glue. And then after for the head, you can finish the head any way you want. You can put, I suppose it all depends on the action you want that fly to have. If you want a really slow suspending action, you're going to do the head I'm going to do now. Uh, if you want a more slow jig, you can put a, a fish mask or something like that. Um, what flash am I using, Douglas? Actually, this is from an Irish seller. I got that one. Uh, where is it? I dropped it on the floor already. I got that from an Irish seller, and and it's quite nice. Good value. Uh, good long shanks. It's from craftyfly.com. Shout out to Crafty Fly. There you go. 30 centimeters. You get about 800 strand. I really do like that pearl, a little bit crinkle. I can that kind of goes on all my bait fish. Like it's uh, you get that little blue, a little bit of everything. Very roachy for here, like so. Russ, how you doing, Russ? Happy Friday. So crafty fly, I think yeah, it is a, an Irish business. I, I I I don't know if they're just starting. Um, but they have a few things on their website and I found it kind of nice to have. So, <coughs> uh, yes, yeah, so uh, other things we could use, you can put, like I said, you can stick a head on that if you want. There you go. Fly finished, done. 
but this one's gonna have obviously a, a more sinking action but it'll work as no problem by the way if you want uh, I'll have to put that in the in the details uh, in the in all the the comment section below or in the description of the video these heads uh, have been sent that those by Anthony Boulay okay and it's uh, called a streamer volant the flying streamer uh, he 3d printed these himself and they are really neat can I get it yeah not hard to see the the details here knock that bloody light again there you go kind of hard to see my lighting is not perfect so but uh, that's another way good 3d heads like that but they are they are clunky and heavy um, you can go full floating you can put a foam head on it but the way I fish it, I just go with a small um, deer belly hair head. So I'm going to put two layers of uh, deer belly and I'm, then I'm just going to trim it with the scissors. I probably Rupert would, would, would use that flash as well because like, it is an Irish seller. So sometimes it is handy to have something local uh, that you're not waiting for like six months to come. Um... And it's 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 he has really good value, can't fault his value and the size of his packs. So again, clean your belly hair. Now this now I'm going to use the longest part of the belly belly hair I can find in my pack. So we're going to tie one, one layer, nearly full length of the belly hair. Okay, I have just a pinch. So we're going to tie that full length. I'm going to spread it all around. Give it a spin by hand, lock it, and then have a nice, nice all around finish. Joseph, have you ever experienced with paddle tails? I see they make them out of suede. Yeah, it's um, the the part of the Cohen's creature. Uh, series i think um, i haven't tried th those paddle tails uh, because nobody makes them here and to get them sometimes the postage is absolutely ridiculous so i haven't tried i tried to make them myself out of suede um they don't work i don't have the the, the exact cut because when you do it with the scissors uh, every time you're doing something different you're never replicating the, the same shape really uh something done with a machine so I tried myself to make them. Uh, I was not that successful. They don't really have a, a paddle movement. So, but uh, I think the one uh, sold there uh, by airline, yeah, definitely. Like I would, I would try them. Um, I would like to see even like th those kind of things, even on a big scale. Like you know, I think sometimes they they really forget uh, uh, musky anglers and pike anglers, or maybe they're afraid to make big things for 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 us. Like uh, I don't know. Sometimes I wish the things like that that they make, they just make it a little jumbo size for us, like, you know. Okay. The wiggle tail, yeah, the jungle, jumbo size on wiggle tail, they have them spot on. I mean, you don't want anything bigger than a jumbo wiggle tail when you cast. But sometimes we do need these big things, a larger size, so. All right, so that's the last layer of your belly on this one I'm gonna full length again and I'm gonna tie it right in the middle kind of 50 50 percent okay I'm gonna tie that one right in the middle 
like this. So when it's going to flare, we're going to have a nice room to trim. So I'm going to put a layer here. So it's it's harder to make it spin, so I'd rather go in two goes. So put a little bit on one side and then see where you have a blank spot here. Now I'm going to fill that spot here. So you end up with like something like a, a buffered head. You could fish it like that. You could leave it like that if you want. This is like, but I find it a little bit too buoyant there for my liking. So I'm going to take a little bit off of all the hair at the front. And we finish that. I'm going to clip all this hair. It's going to make it less buoyant and it's going to make it a little bit more sexy. I'm going to have a little bit more of a bait fish head. So just at an angle, I'm going to start cutting all that layer of belly hair. Take your time, just cut bit by bit. Give it a check that it kind of looks the same all around. I keep that general round bait fish head all around. I have to take a little bit more off here. Now this fly will work as it is. One fly, <laughs> the question, one fly. Um, has to be a simple bunny fly. Uh, a little bunny fly will catch everything everywhere. Salt water, fresh water, anything predatory will, will have a bunny fly. They, they swim really nice. Uh, yeah, I think I'll, I'll, I would go for a bunny fly. Rabbit is really hard to, to beat as movement for predator flies. A little bunny. Catches everything. Trout, pike, musky. No problem. So, now this fly will fish as it is. You can go straight to the water now and fish. I like to give it just at the front here. You see where it's a little bit flat like that like to give it one nice clean, flatten the whole lot, and I'm gonna zap it, give it a little bit of UV, UV in there, just to strengthen the start of that head and the, the last bit of tread there that I finished my fly with. And it gives it a little bit of rigidity at the front, and a little bit of strength. Not too much, like it's just, just at, the, at the front part here. So the front of the of the eye there, the back of the eye. And then if you want, you can use you can put some eyes. This is like the eternal question. Eyes or no eyes. Both works. Been really happy. I've been using this gorilla uh, contact adhesive clear to fix my eyes, and I've been using that for about a year, year and a half, and it's really good. It's really good. It's a slow drying. It's about like five minute cure, I think. It doesn't run like super glue, so you can put a little, a little dab on it. Uh, it's not gonna show it. Yeah, there you go. You can put a little dab of glue without having it running everywhere. That's one thing I hate with super glue. And what I do, I'll just put it on the fly like this. 
Give it a couple, a little bit of a squeeze for the glue to kind of spread all around the back of the eye. The glue to start to get kind of sucked in the fibers and the, the hair. And I'm going to leave it like that. Just a couple of squeeze. And it's important to let it cure for about a, just a minute or so. And then you can squeeze it and you'll get a good, a good final hold to your eye. I'll do the other one. Yeah, bunny fly, the bunny. I think it's one of my first first ties as well. I used to do bunnies. They're so easy to tie. Okay, second eye on the side. Again, I just drop it in like that. You see it's not sitting properly. It's like, but I'm gonna give it a couple of tap just to get that glue to suck in the, the hair. I'm going to leave it. And you can come back. You see the first eye is starting to tack and to stick. You see as I press, it's holding the hair flat a little bit. So it's going to give you a, a side profile on the fly. So I'm going to squeeze it now and hold it for a few seconds. And then we start to have a nice better shape of a head. And that's it guys, that's that's simple. Um, oh, but I think the question is which fly line? Oh, fly line, I didn't read the whole lot. Yes, I see it. Uh, fly line, wow. Uh, only one type of fly line? No. You can't be successful with one type of fly line. Uh, you will struggle at different times. Um, Pleasure-wise, uh, it's definitely a floating for me. Uh, that'll be my, my main, uh, where I get the most kick out of fishing flies would be a floating line. Uh, I mean, on the river, when you, when you get a drift, you can roll the fly over a rock and pass the fly behind it. Uh, there's so much more thing you can do with a floating line than the sinking. Sinking will go in the water and then that's it, you can't do anything. Um, if you want to pull your line out of the water and recast at a fish that maybe was following your fly, it's going to be a lot harder with a sinking line and a fly than a floating line. Floating line, you just double haul the whole line out of the water and you can recast on top of a fish uh, a lot easier. So, favorite to fish for me is uh, floating, but as being successful with a fly line, it's not going to be uh, just one line, unfortunately. Uh, I fish, I have about four lines that I fish all the time, even in winter, like in summer. Uh, I could fish an S6, depending on the conditions and the time of day, and if it's bright, if it's sunny, if the pike have pushed down the, the drop-off, if they're in the lily pads. There's a lot of things uh, that, that can go uh, with fly line. I know a lot of people are confused with fly lines, but basically what I have, I have a floating, intermediate, and then I have two sinking lines. Uh, bear in mind that the when I fish here, sinking line, I don't fish places that are more than 10 meters deep. Over 10 meters deep, uh, I'll just get the lure rod out. Uh, I'm not going to start scratching the bottom at 16 meter with a fly, with a fly rod. Uh, it's pointless. Uh, you don't get as much result, first of all. Um, I think the, the the efficiency of fly fishing there is starting to get lost when you fish deep for pike like that. Uh, I think the main target for pike is about from zero to about eight meter is the, the ideal uh, depth. And luckily enough here, that's what we have. Uh, lakes that are 10 meters deep are very, very rare. Uh, there is a few. But uh, we fish mostly between one and five meter deep here. So we usually go from floating intermediate and uh, S3 to S5, S6 uh, maximum. And uh, like I said in previous videos and, 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 and live streams, I, I usually go for the triple D, triple density uh, fly lines for the sinking ones. Just so the fact that you get a nice flat sink uh, on the line, you don't get a big, a big curve, a big banana. So you're missing like loads of... Uh, 
hits and uh, you, it's harder for the fish to harder for you to hook up the fish like that when you have a big bow on the line so yeah that's my my fly line advice but then again depends where you fish guys uh, i mean if you fish shallow water uh, you get away with the fly with the floating all the time no need to go for an intermediate i don't see the point of uh, an intermediate actually i, I fished for the best part of my first two, three years of fly fishing for pike was with a floating line. That's all I used. And I, I caught a ton of fish. Um, pike that are hunting will come from like five meters deep with a floating line if they want to. If they're hungry, if they feel your fly, uh, they'll come up to the surface and chase it. We, we often fish like that in the summer um, when the pikes are hiding in the potamos uh, or in the cabbage patch, uh, usually this cabbage patch, they, 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 they're kind of tall. So the, you have maybe four or five meter deep sometime on this cabbage patch and you get one meter of uh, water free at the surface. And uh, often you can fish a floating line just over the cabbage patch and they come from the bottom. No problem to grab the grab the flies. So that's that's what I think. Yeah, yeah. Intermediate too, like it's it's really good fly. You get the best of both worlds. You can still even fish a popper with inter intermediate. Uh, you can, if you fish it fast enough, or if it's a slow intermediate, you can get away like that. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, there's no secret thing. It's a, it's a, a successful angler is the one that that changes constantly and and. and go with the with the flow and and what's happening on the day um that's why sometimes i i don't fly fish all the time sometimes i get the lures out because i do know that i'll have uh more takes on lures on certain days than others uh, and that's just the way it goes um but most of the time the fly is kind of king we we get most hits on the fly pike love the fly so um that's it any other other questions anything i'll stay a few minutes i'll finish my drink with you and um yeah uh other news uh, what i can tell you yes uh, i'm doing up the four-wheel drive i'm doing an overland project so that will be for the summer camping take everybody out all the family out it'll be a good bit of fun for the for the summer and it'll double up uh in the fishing season as a as a nice base camp so i'll be making a video on the on the change I've made to the to the four wheel drive and make it uh, fish friendly, camping friendly. Uh, there's a few people I know that like that kind of outdoorsy things. So I'll be I'll be putting that on the on the channel. So thanks again, guys. Uh, let's push the subs as well. Uh, we are three thousand two hundred and eighty subs. Uh, let's push it to four thousand subs. So don't be afraid. Um, yeah share the hell out of uh, the videos hopefully we'll we'll reach a bigger audience it's uh, it's bloody hard now if you don't pay for for exposure now on social media it kind of suck because the more money you have the the easier he, he gets so i count on you give us give us a <laughs> give us a bit of a of a hump and a push uh russ uh, how about a fly pattern castable with a spinning rod uh, I usually tie them on on lead hook on on jig hooks for 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 my clients. Um, simple jig hook, single hook. You can tie a second hook. I don't have here. I don't have any here. Like uh, I think they're all sold out. But I usually cast uh, ties them on on say on on the big jig hook. Fifteen grams or twenty gram jig hooks. Uh, you can tie a fly like you tie a normal fly. Don't complicate with uh, like. Uh, uh, harness and all that sort of thing just single hook uh nice jig head i use what do i use i use, use the the fox fox uh, jig heads the extra strong one and they're on six zero and eight zeros and the big hooks 10 20 10 15 and 20 grams works really well here so and tie a normal fly on the jig head and you'll see you'll catch fish no problem with them and um, we have great success here with a Nice bulky head made out of uh, uh, buck tail. And then uh, for the tail for the back, just a big chunk of flash. Like, don't worry. Put a, like a big chunk of lure flash or lurex at the back. 
it's cheap and uh, it works to catch a ton of fish i tell you that i made a video i think i have an old video on uh, on spin flies uh, when i'm fishing them i had a cracking day that day it was great so all right um uh, well thank you very much uh thanks russ thanks shorty uh thanks Derek douglas thanks again for the the subscription thank you everyone thanks for the support always nice to to come back for our live stream and see that there's still a few people <laughs> <laughs> willing to come on a Friday and watch. So I'll be making more uh, before I start walking. So uh, if you have ideas of fly you want me to tie, put them on the on the, on the the Instagram and um, we'll make a poll and see what we want to tie. So, but that's it for me. There you go. That's the my version of the Holonayat. Really light, bulky. And catches fish. Most importantly, always important to catch the fish. Thank you guys. Good night. Tight lines. Go and catch some fish. That's what I should be doing. Uh, thank you. Catch you soon. Let's see what I find out how I get out of this stream. Goodbye, guys.